Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Steve from graphicdesignertips.com. This is Logo Design Bootcamp episode number 23, where every week I design a new fictitious logo and show you how to build it in Adobe Illustrator. And by doing all these videos from start to finish, uh, you'll definitely learn a lot of tools uh, to become a much better graphic designer. This episode is based on the letter W, where like I said, we've started at A and we're just about done with this series and we'll eventually move on to another great series. But Featuring the uh, the letter W is an idea I had based on a wine or a wine company, uh, and Wilmington is just a place that I've I've gone to in Vermont before that I like. So you know we all like wine, and it fit perfectly with the letter W. So check it out. Here is the Wilmington Wine Company, and uh, the cool thing about this logo is every week I get certain comments. Uh, you know, can you make logos look a little bit less cartoonish? Or you know more simplified, but in a lot of cases, the more simpler a logo is, you know, the less you're really going to learn in these programs. But the best logos in the world are very simple. So what I ended up doing with this one is I threw it on a uh, a color background, knocked it out, and it gives it some character. But as a plain lo as a logo without anything in the background, it's a very plain Jane logo. So, but let's jump into Adobe Illustrator CS6. Let me review this real quick, and then I'll teach you how to build it. So let's go. The Wilmington Wine logo is a very, like I said, a very simple logo, but it's just this background that makes it look more, you know, uh, sexy or, you know, more professional, however you want to call it. But um, like I said, standalone is just a plain Jane logo. But the font that is used is called uh, Barcantina, and I'll put that below the description of the video. And uh, basically, uh, all I did was and I'll show you in Adobe Illustrator CS6 was I separated the W from the rest of the word so I can make the W larger. I might want to use that W if I was building this brand as just a, you know, its own symbol and uh, maybe throw one of these swirls in the, in these areas over here. Who knows? But, you know, just experiment at that moment. Um, what I ended up doing was I ended up making these little grapes with a, a little brush stroke, which I'm going to show you. This isn't technically part of the logo because it makes it too much going on, but I threw it in there because maybe it's an added thing that is, you know, an element that is used to, you know, on the bottle or on the packaging or, or something like that, you know. So um, on the on the eyes, what I did was I created like a wine glass shape here. I extended the eye up. And so you still know that's an eye. From here, you know this is an eye with this swirl that I put there. I also put the swirl there. So you wouldn't get confused thinking, okay, that's an eye, but what is this? Um, I also separated this out in the color here just because the word wine, and I wanted to break it up a little bit. What I could have done was maybe I could have put this line going straight between the G and the T, but this is how I did it, and uh, it looks pretty damn good this way you know so let's jump into Adobe Illustrator CS6 and I will build this logo uh, relatively simple like I said uh, pretty quick all right so now we're in Adobe Illustrator CS6 and the first thing I want to talk about is this background coloring and I want to come up here and make a rectangle and I already have the gradient that I created now I'm going to show you this over here it goes right in the middle from a light color and the outside are all dark colors. If you can see dark colors, light, dark again. Now, I want to get the same exact values for this tan color over here, but I don't want the gradient to mess up. So what I want to do is I want to go to Command C, I want to copy this, and I want to go to Command F or Edit, Paste in front. So you're actually creating another instance right on top of itself. And what you're going to do is you're going to take any color that you want, but mostly, uh, you know, a tan or a light brown. And you're going to want to put that lightest part of the color and replace it in the middle. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace one of these where they start to get darker. But in the color palette, you want to increase this black to maybe like 20% more black in it and start replacing some of the colors in that actual gradient. And... The darkest one is between everything. We're going to add another 20% or so, and we're just going to replace that. All right, so now we have these two squares, which are going to be in the background of our image. And I want to get some rounded corners to put a little bit of a nicer feel on this. So what you want to do is you want to select both of these and go to Command G or Group Object Group. This is another way of getting to it. And come into here into the rounded rectangle tool, and that's way too rounded. So click. Uh, on the keyboard, on the uh, canvas, and you're just going to lower your corner radius. That's good enough. So let's come up in here 
and just go over the shape because you're going to make a clipping mask. You're going to take everything and put it in that new shape. So you're going to now select all these elements, which is actually only two, and you're going to right click and make clipping mask. And now you got your nice rounded corner area. And we're going to come up to the type tool and click right here. And we're going to type in the letter W in caps. And the font is called Barcantina 1. And you can find that on the internet for free to use in this tutorial. And we're going to change the fill color of this to white. And we're going to make sure there's no stroke on that. And I think I actually may have squeezed that in a little bit. I'm not a fan of squeezing text, but maybe for the purpose of this tutorial, I will. And we're going to come up here to the type tool again. And we're just going to type everything in lowercase I L M I N G T O N. Hit escape always to end that selection. All right, and we're just gonna kind of eye this up to how I have it above. Like I said, this logo probably took me a nice two hours from concept to completion. So, you know, this video has gotta be in like 10 minutes, or this part at least. Um, and we're going to turn that to white. Put no stroke on that. And we're gonna make sure the bottoms are pretty aligned, just kind of visually aligning them for right now. We'll mess around with that later. But uh, you wanna now come into here and just outline everything. Type create outlines. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to hit the A on the keyboard. I want to erase a couple of things. Um, now, if you go to select a letter and on action you click the background, that's going to happen. The background's going to move. So what you want to do is, excuse me, go to your direct sel uh, your selection tool or V on the keyboard. You want to highlight this entire back element and go to object lock selection or command two. So now you can't mess around with that object. See, I'm trying to click it. Now you want to come to your direct selection or hit A on the keyboard. It's your white arrow and you want to hover over certain things. You want to delete this. You want to delete that. And that's actually all you want to delete. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create these little, um, uh, well, you know, what? we're going to create this arc shape. But first, we're going to Highlight these points. Now you can only do this with the direct selection. If you want to manipulate any individual points, you cannot do it with the regular selection tool. You got to do it with the white arrow, direct selection. You're directly selecting selecting points. So now you want to hover over these points here and you want to just while holding shift, because if you don't hold shift, this is going to happen. Hold shift and it's going to go straight up and down as you move. All right. So just make it a little bit higher. And now we're going to come into the ellipse tool and I'm going to make the same size ellipse that I have in here and we're going to basically cut it out from itself after okay so I, I kind of like the arc that that's doing and I'm going to turn this into a different color so you see exactly what I'm about to do uh, I'm going to turn that blue and I'm going to co copy command C command F now I pasted it on top of itself now don't select off of this yet we're going to turn this green and all I'm going to do is I am going to take this arrow right here and I'm going to kind of shrink this while holding shift and basically in the end or you know maybe you don't have to shrink it you just have to nudge it up a little bit from its original shape now basically what you're seeing is a green on top of a blue but I'm going to subtract the top from the bottom. So all you're going to see left is what you see in blue right now, like a moon. So you're going to select both of these. You're going to come into your pathfinder and you're going to go to the second to the, from the top uh, left minus front. And now we have this nice little shape right here. And we're going to fill that with white as it's supposed to be. And, you know, you can kind of change the angle of it, mess around with it however you'd like. You know, like I said, this tutorial took a long time. So... I'm just trying to do this real quick. And the next thing you want to do is these cool little swirls. Now you're going to come into the spiral tool and you're going to click and you're going to let go and you're going to come over here and hit the default fill and swatch and make sure there's no fill in that. And, you know, just turn it black for now. And what I usually do is I just mess around with this. I might squish this, which is what I actually did up there. And I'm going to, with my direct selection again, I'm going to delete one two and I actually kind of like that right there so um, I'm going to zoom into this and I'm going to delete a few more I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to delete that one 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ellipse tool and I'm just going to make a little circle at the end. And all right, we're not going to change the fills on that yet. You'll see what I'm going to do in a second. Now, again, we're going to lock this element. If it became unlocked, I unlocked it on accident. So command two, so we can't mess with it. I'm going to push this element up here. I am going to turn that black stroke into a white stroke. And now I'm going to turn that into a solid white circle to kind of get that shape that I made for myself. And like I said, you can even squeeze this and now command G always group things and hit the E on the keyboard so you can rotate and or mess around manipulate. It's really that's E is the transform key. And there we go. So the more you mess around with it, the more, you know, you'll get it closer to what I have up top. Uh, and then we're going to go to option, click, and we're going to shift it on over. Turn the angle on that a little bit more. Cool. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do these grapes. Actually, that's, you know, basically the second to last thing we're going to do. But, um, what you want to do is, uh, it's very, very simple. You can even zoom in on top of my, my canvas right now, and you can do a screenshot or whatever. And you're going to come up to the ellipse tool, and you're going to make a bunch of ellipses. All right? And we're going to go to option, click, shift, and so just start copying them over. So option, click, shift. I'm going to do all the small ones right now. Then I'm going to make one larger a little bit and kind of put it where it looks like there's large ones all over the canvas. And then we got this one, there's a monster right here. Okay, so now that we got our grapes, for wine grapes, um, we're now gonna come and take our other, other uh, swirl that we did before, and we're gonna go to Option, we're gonna click, and we're going to rotate it and we're going to make it a little bit larger and okay all right now that i have this all locked we're going to take all these elements and we're going to command g group them and we're going to take the fill and turn it into a stroke i'm just gonna to have to shrink these just a little bit and then with the direct selection let's mess around with our our stem right here, kind of get it to the angle that we want. All right, looks a little funky, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna select this whole piece and we're gonna go come up into our brushes, which are, where are they? Our brushes are here, depending on how you have your layout set up. And we're gonna hit the right down arrow, open brush library, artistic chalk, chalk pencil. We're going to come all the way to the bottom and we're going to start messing around, seeing what we got in here. Um, let's do a uh, the very bottom one. It says pencil thin and we'll make the stroke about three points. And then the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to, while we have this thing still selected, we're going to come into our transparency, which just disappeared on me. I got to get my, I have my own set layout. There we go. Okay. Where's my transparency? Transparency, and we're going to go to, say, 50% and see how that looks. It looks pretty cool. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type out the word wine. Very simple. W-I-N-E, escape. We're going to, while holding shift, shrink this down till it fits in from top to bottom within this area. We're going to hit X on our keyboard so our fill pops up, and we're going to fill it with white. And the next thing we're going to do is what I love to do with text when you need to fit it in an area is we're going to go into character, set the tracking. I'm just going to push up with my uh, magic mouse and it's going to add numbers to that. And it actually adds space after each letter. That's what tracking is. So it added space after each letter, which is what I wanted. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these elements. Let's make sure I have all of them. Okay, yep. And I'm going to do a very simple uh, drop shadow. So I'm going to apply the drop shadow that I did already. You can go and mess around with your own settings. Now, at the end of a logo is when you want to start doing what's called fine tuning. You want to start, you know, 
because you don't want to fine tune a logo that, that you end up not choosing. You don't like it. So we're going to, you see what's happening here. This is a different element. This arc. Ah, come here. This arc. This arc is a different element than that letter I. So you need to combine these two because it's actually, this is adding a shadow right on top of the letter and it doesn't look like it's one complete shape. So you're gonna click this with the direct selection. You're, you're gonna hold shift and click this element right here, the white, the I, excuse me. And we're gonna come up into our pathfinder and hit unite. And I'm gonna zoom in and watch, I'm gonna undo. That's where it was and we're gonna redo. And then that's where it is now. So now it's its own uh, entity. So that is the Wilmington wine logo. All right. So I hope you enjoy building the Wilmington wine logo. Like I said, it's a very simple logo, but then again, the most popular logos in the world are very simple. So, uh, you can do a lot. There's a lot of things you can do with this logo. Uh, you know, putting it on a background, you can use the W as a standalone cause it's a little bit of a unique W the, the font and all. Um, but besides that, leave your comments below. Let me know what you learned in this video. Uh, definitely follow our whole entire series. Click the subscribe button right here. Here's some other videos from the series. Obviously we're 23 in, so don't worry. There's lots of content for you to catch up on. And we got three more videos. So if you have any ideas based on X, Y, Z for X and Z, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't even have any ideas for that. Y also, but you know, X and Z are the, uh, the hard ones to come up with good words or good, uh, ideas. So leave those below if you have ideas for that and I'll definitely consider them. And uh, then again, um, join us next week, next Sunday night, uh, for another episode of Logo Design Bootcamp. My name is Steve Looney from graphicdesignertips.com. Take care.